welcome to night 16 of the G1 Climax. We're doing more B-Block action. Now, as it stands right now, <clears throat> at the end of tonight, in order to be eligible to get that victory, you need to be within one win of the block leader, Kamahiro Ishii. Currently, only four men are eligible to win. Ishii, Tamatonga, Zack Sabre Jr. and Juice Robinson. However, Tamatonga, he's only lost three matches. But unfortunately for him, those three matches were to Ishii, Zack Sabre Jr. and Juice Robinson. So, with that being said, uh, Tamatonga likely cannot you know, advance here. So it's basically down to Juice, ZSJ, and Tomohiro Ishii. Now with Zack Sabre Jr. having a win over both of those men, if there's a three-way tie, he's got it. But, that could all change, because the main event's going to be Juice and Ishii. If Ishii wins, he's too far out for anyone to catch him, Ishii wins the block. Juice wins, things become a lot more tense. So Juice Robinson, he's going to be hoping for a victory. He needs a victory. But those matches will come later. Instead of kicking things off with a battle between the two members of Los Angobernables de Japón that are in this tournament, Tetsuya Naito and Sonata. These two are going to be going toe-to-toe. -to, -toe to kick things off at night 16. Two faction members, two brothers in arms, two good friends looking to do battle. Fight. Now they go, both with ropes. Ooh, look at that knight, so holding on. Stomp there from Naito. Now trying to circle around each other, trying to get a nice feel out of each other here. Can Sonata beat the leader of Austin Goblin on this day up on here? Can he beat his leader? Oh, will Sonata out? Oh, will Naito manage to outwrestle the subordinate? Trying to tie up here, good elbow to the back by Naito. Good swinging neck breaker there. Now they're trying to tie up again. Sonata with a nice strike. Ooh, big drop kick missing. Try up again. Good step of insecurity here from Naito. In the pin. One. Ooh, big miss there from Naito, this is bad. But can he recover here? Now no, Sonata trying to out Matt wrestle him here, trying to hook him up. Oh my god, a big power bomb to Naito. Seven pins of Giri. Now into the pin, Naito has it. But only the counter one. They're going to be the strike exchange here. And Sonata emerges victorious from it as Naito drops to the ground. He's going to pull Naito back away from the ropes. Oh, I'll drop a step of Enzigiri again. And bridging German suplex here from Naito. Two. No. And keep in mind the uh, Tamatonga match. Yeah, Tamatonga can't uh, win the block because the three men he's lost to are happen to be three men that he's fighting for for victory. So on tiebreaker, he will lose. ZSJ is sitting in a pretty good position. And Juice Robinson will kind of need ZSJ to lose to keep him away. Because if they time points, Zack Sabre Jr. is taking it. And Juice definitely needs a win. Not only to save himself, but to save Zack Sabre Jr. <laughs> and that's high up here. Forearm from Sonata. As opposed to the B block, A block where everything was decided, we still have, we have two big matches that can have ramifications on everything here. Now dropping into a sleeper hold goes Sonata. But it is potential, it is potentially possible, that the winner of V-Block will be decided tonight. And when we go into night 17 and 18, the final nights for both blocks, we could go into it knowing the winners, which would really suck, <laughs> if I'm to be honest with you. <laughs> Destino from Naito! Out of nowhere, now into the pin. Six minutes, two, three, ooh! Sonata kicks out of the Destino. Going for a second one, connecting! Surely that's got to be it. After two in a row. No! Sonata gets the shoulder up. A third Destino from Naito. Three Destinos. One, 
two, three, no, <laughs> Sonata kicks out again, once you're finished so I can kick out of it, Sonata completely burying Naito. Sending him to the ropes. No, I don't know. Hitting the ropes again. Santon. German suplex with the bridge. Three. And that's what does it. Not the three Destinos. Pretty serious with the German suplex. Relatively quick match there to kick things off. Now we're going to another match that's very highly anticipated. Some could say a very comedic battle about to go on here. Toru Yano against Kenny Omega. Both these guys are known for being a bit, bit cheeky, a bit funny in their ways. But um, And that match did put Naito on 8 points. But sadly, the maximum he's going to be able to get, even if he wins tomorrow night, will be 10. Which will not be enough to reach Tomohiro Ishii's point total of 12. Gouging the eyes goes Yano. Now off the ropes. Forearm. Tying up again. Omega sending Yano to the corner. Block. Tying up once more. Drop toe hold. Forearm. Test of strength from Yano and Omega. Sending Yano over the top rope. Strike doesn't connect. Forearm. That one connects though. Sending Kenny to the corner. Oh, drop kick misses. Lands on his stomach. And they tie up. Still close to the corner. Test of strength. Drop toe hold from Omega. Fly back here. Gouging the ice once more. Drop kick doesn't connect. Continuously gouging those eyes out, pretty much. My goodness. Now sending Yano to the corner. What do you do here? I believe at the moment, in the real life, Night 7's just been in the G1 Climax. Um, I've missed the past couple nights due to other obligations. Suplex for Omega! I did catch the first four nights, but then missed the next three because of other obligations. But, you know. Yano yeah, sending Omega to the ropes. Good elbow right to the chest there. I thought we were going to see 0 and 9 Okada, to be honest. Like, he was going to lose every match. But then he won, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Here they go now. Tying up again. Forearm. Omega and Yano back and forth. Going behind, sending Omega to the corner. Oh, that's right, o o Yano defeated Ibushi in a very, very quick time with that roll-up. Omega might be looking to avenge that here. Might be looking to try and get some get some revenge for Ibushi. Maybe. Yeah, tie up again, now sending Omega to the corner. How about the back? Tie up. Good over from Omega. Now a Bulldog right in the middle of the ring here. Sending. Oh my god, here we go. V took a no goes behind instead. Elbow from Yano countering. Yano up the rope with a no goes behind. That's sending him to again. So many rope runnings here. Good elbow right to the chest. And Yano maintaining control. Yano up against the IWGP heavyweight champion, Kenny Omega now. Try and work that leg. Get behind. Bulldog once more from Omega. Off the ropes. Elbow right to the chest again. Elbow from Omega now. A lot of elbows hitting in this one. Coming off the ropes. Drop kick! Drop kick doesn't connect this time. Omega, cross like Fisherman Buster! Drop kick connecting from Omega! Middle of the ring! Oh, 
Oh, now I'll go to the chest. Leg behind the head, jumping across the back of their neck now. And going behind Omega, grabbing the hold, but Yana going behind him again. Sleeper hold here. And they get out of it. Tying up, here we go. Roll through, roll up now. Two, oh, no, only the one count there. Going behind, running, bulldog. Try to choke him out here. Tie up. Off the ropes comes Omega going behind. Another elbow from Yano this time. Roll up. Here we go in the corner. Just under the 10 minute mark. Two. Only the counter two. Oh, dropped it. Misses. And Omega with a power bomb. Throw oh, the 2.9. Almost put him away. But at the time they drop from Yano. Yano now bouncing him on the shoulders. Is Omega gonna tap out here? No. Doesn't. Instead he keeps going. Oh Omega! Pointing to the sky, bringing the gun out. Sent on off there. Again. Shooting star press. Counter. Spear from Yano! Now into the pin. Two! No, only the two count. The tie up again. Yano with a low blow! Absolutely dismal move right there. But Omega up onto the shoulders. One winged angel! Two! Oh, yes, he did it! <laughs> I thought you yeah, only kicked out for a second there, but no, he did get the three. Kenny Omega. With a three count victory over Toriano. Absolutely fantastic stuff there. He hits that one winged angel. Now. Again, Tamatonga unable to win, but what he can do is put on a fantastic match. He's going to go against Kota Ibushi in our third match of tonight. And I'm going to send Tama to the ropes. I burnt. <laughs> up here. And also when the New Japan roster drops, which I think might be August 9th? Sometime around then. Uh, when that roster drops, I'll get all the official NJ NJPW guys, guys. And then when the Fire Promoter Mode comes out in spring here in Australia, fall for Japan or autumn, um, I'll definitely get that. It's free. And I hope to do videos in that, by the way. Um, my plan is to kind of run a New Japan star promotion in Fire Promoter with the New Japan roster that's available in game. So all the Ring of Honor guys that aren't available, uh, they won't be in it, uh, which is pretty good because that includes Cody and the Young Bucks. I don't have to use them, which is a blessing for me. <laughs> I should do a video where I just rant about my opinions on wrestling. I haven't really got to do that much because I have some things to say about some certain people, like those guys. But anyway, back to the action at hand. Ibushi sends Tamatonga to the corner. But doesn't run in there himself as they tie up elbow from Tama. They tie up again, kick to the bit. Oh, now we're going with the striking exchange from the kick and the forearm back and forth. And they're both down now. Tie up Tamatonga lifting him up and a suplex in the middle of the ring.
My kick doesn't connect. Now sending a bridge here off the ropes. Tamatonga sliding under. Going behind. Grabbing a hold end with Sleeper. Standing Sleeper here. Now sending Tamatonga to the ropes. Sliding under goes Ibushi this time. And again. And then a spinning kick straight to the midsection. Now hitting the ropes himself. Sliding through. Now we're under the, the ankle lock here. Whoa, oh my god! I think Tamatonga might just slide under Ibushi, but he slid himself out of the ring. I don't know whether he intended to do that, whether that was tactical, whether that was um some sort of mind games, maybe? I don't really know what advantage that provides him, sliding himself out of the ring. Uh, I know he's sliding under so you can be on the other side to attack him, maybe is a good idea, but he's just slid completely out of the ring. Maybe Tamatonga is just not very good, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Good elbow drop the back of the head. Into the corner. Whoa, well, Hurricane right up from Tamatonga. So up once more off the ropes, sliding again. Again. Goes behind. Elbow. Elbow again. Now trying to. Oh, four on the back of Ibushi's head. Probably we should do his feet. Hoisting him up on the shoulders, Samoan drop. Nice forearm. Nice strike, I mean. And now Ibushi with a big scoop slam. Got my hold of Tamatonga. Good elbow there from Tama. DDT. Only the two here on that one. Broken Rider wants some more from Tamatonga. Oh, a gun stun from Tamatonga now! Ebushi not moving. Doesn't capitalize though. Of hitting that, he could have, I think, followed up on that. He doesn't now the kicks from Ibushi. Again with the missing. Tamato underhook DDT in the middle of the ring. Both men are down, but Tama gets up first and hooking the leg here into the pin. Two. No. Ibushi gets the shoulder up. Now they untie up again. Off the ropes goes Tamatonga. Into the corner. Here comes Ibushi with that forearm. Lock up again, series of forearms here, dropping Tamatonga. Dragging him away from the ropes. Kick to the legs while he's down. Tamatonga lifting up with a suplex. Very well done. Oh, now taunting. Two. Three. Oh, if he had been off with a taunt. A forearm, I think that may have fell to Bushi there. He's down. Unmoving. High five throw from Tamar halfway across the ring. And again, maybe. No, just decides to climb and climb down. Mind games. Ibushi missing the drop kick. Oh, Irish Whip, here comes Ibushi. Oh, scooping power slam from Tamatonga. Now as he goes into the pin. Oh, no, Ibushi again with the shoulder up. Tamatonga. Hitting the ropes. Forearm. Hook at the leg once more. Three, Tama Tonga picks up the win. Again, Tama, he's certainly within the point range. But again, due to tiebreakers, he will not be able to win, but he can still finish with an impressive record. Incredible stuff from Tama Tonga. Now we enter one of two matches that will decide the fate of this block. Hirohi Goto and Zack Sabre Jr. ZSJ with wins over guys like Ibushi, Tamatonga, Ishii and Juice Robinson. Zack Sabre Jr. needs to win this in order to keep his chances at winning the G1 alive. If he loses, he will not be able to catch Ishii. And remember, if Zack Sabre Jr. does win, he has wins over Juice and Ishii. So his chances 
I'm looking really good. But not only does he need a win, he needs Ishii to lose. And if three of them will tie on point, Zack so Zack Zach Sabre Jr. wins the next night and Ishii loses again. He's done it. So ZSJ needs to win both these matches and he needs Ishii to lose both these matches. That's how Zack Sabre Jr. will win the G1, or win the B block at least. But we take each obstacle one step at a time. First one being Hiroki Goto. Good arm drag there. Now, arm bar from Goto. Kick there. More arm doesn't connect. Side headlock, Goto. Oh no, take down there. Now to the corner goes Goto. Can run full speed. No, just goes for the slap across the chest instead. Boot doesn't connect. Drop toe hold from Goto. Dragon Zaxxer Jr. away from the ropes. Roll up here. Only the one count. Natural down. Here we go. Try a transition. Some ground and pound here. No. Goes into the Kimura there from Zack Sabre Jr. Goto with the suplex. Kick to the back. Hiroki Goto has the chance to end Zack Sabre Jr.'s G1 hopes. Dropping him down here. Take down here, Zack Sabre Jr. on top, now transition, oh kick off from Goto, sending Zack Sabre Jr. to the ground, expertly done there, European uppercut, oh they're going back and forth now, uppercuts and strikes, but down goes Goto, stretching out that leg, throwing through Zack Sabre Jr. with the roll up here, no, good slap there, <laughs> Side up off the ropes comes ZSJ. Close by turning him inside that man land on his head there. Now he's going to go from that crucifix pin. No. ZSJ's hopes stay alive. Now on top, trying to transition again and good luck with the grapevine. Oh, a snap suplex from ZSJ. Off the ropes, boot straight to the head. Suplex now. Oh, and up I can't from ZSJ. Just tap out. Oh, half Nelson suplex. Godo's neck, maybe broken off that. Godo puts him into the air. Show ten Kai from Godo. Hook in the leg. One, two. Three to oh, Zack Sabre Jr. kicks out. The G1 hopes is still alive, Armbar now. Gotta pull that arm out of place. That armbar is particularly deadly because you have all the weight of ZSJ pulling down on the arm, pulling back against the shoulder blade too, or pulling out the shoulder out of its socket. Not only do you have a man stretching your arm, you have gravity doing all the work, but now a roll through armbar. He goes to the ropes. Rolling's kick there. Now try to type a big scoop. No! Sit out, swing out, side slam from Goto! Here's all the best moves. Kick to the back. Beautiful suplex there. Tie up. ZSJ. Trying to get. Oh! Back body drop. Oh, Zach Sabre Jr. is falling out of the ring. And three there. Gets back in though. Big boot connects. Zack Sabre Jr. now working that leg. Again, twisting it back against the way it's supposed to go. How much more this can go to take? How much more stretching and limb pulling will go to be able to take? Oh, Irish whip now off the ropes. Close line and again, Zack Sabre Jr. flipped the round. Two, three, oh, Zack Sabre Jr. just kicks out. 
He keeps the hopes alive and hands off the ropes. Big boot. Sign. That, that bulldog there. From Goto. Now, Pawn ZSJ up. Drops don't connect. Suplex. No, Goto counters with a suplex of his own. To the outside. Zach Zabby Jr. landed head first on the outside. They may have heard him. Oh, brilliant with my suplex. Transitions to the armbar. On the outside, you can't make an opponent tap out there. Count of seven. And even though Goto was in the armbar, he's the first one up. Oh my god. Suplex on the outside onto the wooden floor. They're into the crowd now. Drop toe hold. ZSJ needs to get back to the ring. A tie won't be enough. He needs a win. 15. Goto slides in under the bottom rope at the count of 16. Goto. The winner of last year's G1 simulation headbutt from the top rope. He can't win this year. But maybe he can prevent Zack Sabre Jr. from getting there. If I can't win, no one can. Double underhook suplex. ZSJ hits the ropes. Kick to the head. Rolling through the bridge, the pin. Has he got it here? Three! Zack Sabre Jr. wins. There is still hope yet. For ZSJ. Zack Sabre Jr. picks up the victory. He can still win this G1 climax. But. Only if this next match goes the way he wants it to. This next match is the one that really decides it all. The fate of the B block lays in this match. Ishii's only lost one match, and that was to Zack Sabre Jr. He will square off with Juice Robinson. If Juice wins, he, Zack Sabre Jr. and Ishii are all still poten potential winners. They can all still win. But if Ishii wins, then he secures the block. So Juice, he's not just fighting for himself, he's fighting for Zack Sabre Jr. But the situation looks like this for Juice. He needs to win here. And he needs to win to, uh, the next night. But he will need Ishii and Zack Sabre Jr. to lose. Ishii to lose because he needs him to be on the same amount of points so he can win the tiebreaker. And he needs ZSJ to lose because if he hits on the same amount of points, he will beat Juice due to the tiebreaker. So Juice needs to win, needs the other two to lose. Uh, for Ishii, if he loses this, then he needs the other two to lose. Because if anyone gets up to him, he'll, they'll, they'll beat him on, on tiebreaker. And for Zack Sabre Jr., all he needs to do is win. And have Ishii lose. <laughs> In that final night. Yeah, this match is going to be everything. This is going to be the one that sets up the ramifications. To, on the final night, on night 18, we could have three matches that will be going to determine who gets through. We have three huge matches that will determine the fate of this block. Or, if Ishii wins here tonight, it'll already be decided, thus making that block uh, a complete and utter waste of time. <laughs> Juice Robinson now. Oh, easy hoisting mid. No. Good counter. Suplex from Juice. And sent on there. From behind. Suplex there from Ishii. Oh, four on the back of the head there. DDT from Deuce Robinson now as Ishii's down. Trying to pull him to his feet. Oh, here we go. The strike exchange is back and forth here. Drops to the chest. Now, sidewalk slow. The backbreaker, of course. Tying up. Forearms raining in now across the head of Ishii. And Juice Robinson. Can he stand up to the Stone Pitbull? One of the most aggressive, powerful, strong style wrestlers here 
in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hoisting him up. Stalling. Suplex to Juice as he falls to the outside. Back in the ring comes Juice. And Juice dropping each of the series of strikes. Two. No. They try and get some distance from each other. Street strikes here. Chop doesn't connect. Tying up once more. Ishii behind. Suplex. Close to the outside, but not quite. Off the ropes. Ishii sliding in with a nice kick there. Ishii with a power bomb. Can he secure it here? No. Album again from EG, folds him up! 4-2.9! The B block was so close to being secured, now the elbows rain into Juice. Juice Robinson's hopes of the G1 climax. And they're in jeopardy, Brain Buster now! It's looking more and more unlikely for Juice. But Juice Robinson trying to fight back, trying to give it everything he's got. Bridging suplex! The neck! I mean, you can't break one if you don't have one, I suppose. <laughs> Hoisting him up! Brain Buster to Juice Robinson! This could be the end! Goes behind Juice, fending him off, keeping himself alive for now. Neck breaker! Again, easy don't have a neck. Here we go! Powerbomb is the G1! Is it sealed in the box? Do we know who's got it? We do! Tomohiro Ishii picks up the win! And just like that... Ishii... with the win makes the G1 Climax final set. Hiroshi Tanahashi... versus Tomohiro Ishii. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are still two nights left uh, of, the, of the G1. But that being said, we already know who's winning. Because look at that. 14, much 10, 14. No one can catch the block leaders. Tanahashi and Ishii are both... They are both confirmed block winners. Um, I'm still going to do night 17 and night 18. Oh man. See what other B block matches we got going on. You know, we got matches like uh I Ibushi and Omega. You got Naito and ZSJ. Sonata and Ishii. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great fun. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. Oh, Tamatonga and Yano. Goto and Juice. Yeah, so I'm gonna do, do night 17 and 18. Still gonna go through them. But then at the end, um, on the final night, what I've decided to do is instead of just doing Tanahashi vs Ishii, what I want to do is do a full night of matches, like 10 matches actually. So like, I'll go with the top ranked guys against each other in the, in the final, obviously. But the rest of the night will be like 10th ranked guy against 10th ranked guy. 9 against 9, 8 against 8, you know, that sort of thing. And I'll just do 10 matches. So that way it's not just one match, and it's also a bit of a longer video, more grandiose thing for the finals. But we'll deal with that when we come to it. This is midnight 16, the G1 Climax. I'm sort of bummed that we already know the results. Uh, and two nights left to go. It makes those nights sort of less exciting, I suppose. But, I mean, maybe you want to still watch it for entertainment purposes. Maybe the matches will still be fun. Uh, I hope they are. I'm still going to try and have fun with it and try and put as much enthusiasm into it as I can. Uh, but if you're only looking to see who wins, then the final will still be out. It will come, but we still have two more shows to do before then. Stay tight.